Foundation Studio, which is situated at Knoll in Kent. The Sultan of Surat painting that I'm sitting by here is fascinating. It comes from Studley Royal, where it is part of an 18th century decorative scheme. We're working really closely with our colleagues in Yorkshire to try and understand the object better. Who might the artist have been? Where was it painted? Where it's come from? And we're really kind of conjoining together in teams, both at the Conservation Studio here and at Studley Royal, to help the audience understand more about this picture, but also vitally for us to try and answer lots of queries we've got about the painting. The equestrian portrait takes place before the River Tapti. On the left here, we've got European trading factories, uh, specifically Dutch uh, trading factories, marked out by the tricolour Dutch flag here. And then on the right is the castle of Surat. Um, you can see it's fortified and turreted. So we know that it was definitely painted by 1771 because there's an entry in a travel journal of that date which records the painting in the banqueting hall at Studley Royal. We also know that it must have been painted when the Dutch East India Company controlled international trade at Surat because we see their flags flying in the portrait. An important part of this painting is definitely the scroll. We think from some uh, initial transcriptions that it names uh, people and also contains dates. So this might be a key part of our investigations going forward. The main reason why this painting has come to the conservation studio for treatment is that um, we have a very degraded varnish layer on the surface and we also have a lot of restorations, lots of overpaint. Underneath this, these areas you will have the original paint and there will probably be far less damage which we can reveal. I, I'm using a whole mixture of solvents and, and a, a special gel um, to remove these layers of thick varnish and overpaint. I'm slowly working my way over from the left to the right. As you can see here, it's sort of almost created a halfway line. I've taken some samples of the current varnish sitting on top because it's very slow to dissolve. The varnish has yellowed slightly. We suspect that it was probably applied in the sort of 1950s or 60s, but we don't have any records of what was done. We can only um, guess. I've also taken samples of the paint layers in order to understand any changes within the paint. So when you take pigment samples, you can look at them using the microscope, you embed them in a little bit of resin and identify exactly the types of pigments. The reason we've done that is to try and situate this object as firmly as we can in the date range that we understand it to be mm -hmm. and in the 18th century there were certain pigments being used um, some of which are really visible in UV. You can clearly see the extent of overpaint all these really dark patches they indicate that this is sort of later additions on top of a layer of varnish. You can see there's some really strong fluorescence popping up in the decorative gold paint of the saddle and this may indicate the presence of Indian yellow. So one of the basic pieces of research we've done is looking at images online and this image has come up which is described as an Indian nobleman on a horse. And he's really interesting to us because it's very similar to our painting, but there's no scroll in the bottom left and the horse is depicted in a slightly more kind of animated way. In terms of actually looking more carefully at the scroll, mm. we've used an infrared camera. So you can see the writing is much clearer than in the actual image. So we are hoping that a Persian expert can really identify the writing and whatever is hidden. And then we might find out who the sitter is, who the artist was, and, and to date. What I like most about this painting is the number of clues that it contains. The flags, the scroll, the boats also have flags. The sort of topography all give us really interesting information that further research will help us to decipher. 
the painting clearly wants to tell us something.